Happy Palm Sunday. It's a great day today. It's a day where we're going to lift up the palm branches and we're going to say, Hosanna. It's a prophetic praise. It's a day of victory. I declare victory over you right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to text out five people. Tell them to tune in. Make sure you get your heart ready. I believe that I have a strong word from God. And I want you to hear this praise report. This is from Stephanie. She says, about five days ago, I reached out to Paula White Ministries and the prayer team for an urgent prayer request. I was in desperate need of financial provision that would be lasting and continual so I can keep up on my bills. A recent rent increase, inflation, the economy, it was all overtaking me. That very day, I love that. That very day. In fact, I want you to put your faith that this week is going to be a week of testimonies for you. She says that very day, the Lord blessed me with a 17 hours a week increase at work. This will cover everything that has gone up in my household. Thank you, Lord, so much. And thank you, Pastor Paula White and your dedicated prayer team and ministry. Look, we really do pray. And we really do take serious that that when you reach out to us with your praise reports, with your prayer requests, we go before the Lord. There's an army of intercessors that get these every single day. So make sure you send to us your prayer requests. Make sure you send to us your praise reports. Stay in contact. I want to be your pastor. I want to do life with you. So today, during this holy week, this set up time by God, I want your faith and your expectation to be there. Hosanna. What do you mean? Well, I'll be right back and tell you what that means because I have a word for you. But just before we do, get your heart ready. Let's enter into his presence as my husband, Minister John, comes forth and worships. For I had walked in the wilderness now i'm called to move to the house of god overcoming my emotion swept away in your word of truth melt my fear let it flow from me exchange it for my true devotion Steadfast in my mind and heart, a place where time cannot change. On the power and the promise of your love, anxious for nothing, where love returns to light my way. Amazing grace will always be enough. Jesus 
Thank you so much, John. It is so important that we bless God, that we worship Him, that we get our heart in a right place with Him. It's also important that we continue our worship through giving. So giving is a foundational part of our, our Christian walk, that from the very beginning you see sacrifice. In fact, this week is one of the most important weeks for our giving. Because this is the week that God so loved the world, John 3, 16, the most famous scripture ever, that He did what? He gave. You see, you cannot be loving and not be giving. When you love, the off product or the byproduct of loving is giving, giving of your time, giving of your resources. It's honoring God. And I say it all the time. We don't give to get, but we get to give. And every time you give, something supernatural happens. So if I asked you, what, what is the value of this Palm Sunday? What is the value of Great Friday? What is the value of Easter Sunday to you? When, when you start thinking about that and think, where would your life be without reconciliation to God, redemption, without salvation? How different would it be? <laughs> Only God knows. I mean, it, for me, I, I don't even think I'd be alive. I think I would have been dead a long time ago. It'd be destruction after destruction after destruction because that's what the enemy does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy so when I think about the price that Jesus paid, that the iniquity that belonged on me came on him and he did that for me and a love that I'll never fully comprehend, every good thing in my life is because of God. So I get excited like a kid at Christmas. Like I'm like, God, here, I honor you. So what do you give to God? The Bible says, I believe that the tithe is the base. That, that we bring the tithe into the storehouse. Now, tithing should be a regular commitment. Tithe means tenth. So we look, and if we get paid $100, 10 belongs to God. If we make $1,000, 100 belongs to God. So I bring him the tithe, and I give him my offering. So what's the value of Jesus to me? And what does the holiness and the prophetic promise of this week mean to me? I'm going to pray and I believe that God will speak to you. I want you to honor God with a Hosanna offering. Of course, bring his tithe, but also honor him right now. Father, speak to your child because this is a weapon of warfare when we give. This is honor when we give. This is significant of the way that we worship. And so as we honor you with what really belongs to you because everything we have is from you, we say thank you. We place a direction on this seed, on this offering. Lord, I pray that as it goes into the good ground of Paula White ministry, it will reach masses with the gospel message, that it will increase your kingdom, that it will allow us to continue to do all the good works that are determined through your word. And I pray that you would bless the giver because you said that you give seed to the sower. So as that seed leaves their hand, and goes into the literal bank account of Paula White Ministry, increase over them. I declare increase over them in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for your generous giving. I want you to follow the link right there. You can give by going to paulawhite.org. You can give by Cash App, PayPal, Apple Pay. All the different ways are on there. I always say it's not what method you use to give, but it's the fact that you give. 
I pray the Lord bless you generously. Thank you. Now let's get into the word. God's word is your answer. Today is Palm Sunday. As we enter into God's holy week, we come on Good Friday and then Resurrection Sunday. And today is so vital at understanding the plan, the purpose of God. Today is a day of divine deliverance. I believe that God is gonna do something so supernatural, so holy for you in your life. So let's look at God's word. In John chapter 12, verse 12 and 13, the Bible declares on the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And that's an important part because it's not just hearing. It means when they understood because a lot of people hear, but they don't understand. Let your ears be opened. Even now they took the branches of palm trees and they went forth to meet him and they cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the King of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. You see, the people heard that he was coming and they went forth to meet him. The Greek word meet there means to have an encounter. It means the point entered of place, time, and result. In other words, it translates like this. The people understood and knew that they were about to enter the place and time of results. Hear me right now. You see, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that this is a divine time that is set up by God, that eternity is invading the earth and that you are about to usher a divine encounter with God in time and place, that God's presence, God's power, the person of Jesus Christ is about to visit us in a supernatural way. Now, palms, why were they waving the palms? Because palms are always symbolic of victory and of success. Today is not about our agenda, but it is about his agenda. And I prophesy to you, someone is going to break through, break through the realms of the ordinary, break through mediocrity, break through the veil of the flesh, break through into the supernatural arena of God, break through every demonic force that is holding you, your family, your children back. In the name of Jesus, I declare today is a day of breakthrough. As we look at this time on Palm Sunday, we know that we're in one of the most life-changing, miracle-working seasons of the entire year. Timing is important to God. There are things that God has set up on His calendar that He Himself has set divine appointments. Of course, as we see Great Friday, Resurrection Sunday, Holy Week, and then in April, we get to Passover. And on God's calendar, that has been set up as a divine appointment. So these next 30 days are so supernatural. I want you to put your faith with me and believe God for His breakthrough in your life. You see, if it's important to God, it must be of utmost importance to us. These are holy days with very specific instructions given to observe, to honor Him, to recognize, to understand. They also give us opportunities for deeper communion. Do you want to be closer to Jesus? Know the Holy Spirit? Get close to God? Because in that closeness and proximity, it releases blessings to us. And we don't do this like, oh, I'm coming to you so I can get blessing. It's just, I'm coming to you because I love you. And out of that love relationship, there's no way to outgive God. God is a blesser. He's a giver. He's a good, good God. You see, we don't do this out of legalism because we have to. We do this out of obedience, which is a hard attitude because we get to. In other words, some people go, well, I I have to go preach. I have to go to church. I have to go sing in the choir. You don't have to do anything. You get to. And every opportunity afforded to us is a blessing. Today references Palm Sunday. There's a Hosanna in the house. So let's look at it. First off, the Passion Week, which is often referred to this week, is Palm Sunday, March 24th. And then we have Great Friday, Good Friday, March 29th. And then we have Easter Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. And then we start Passover, April 22nd through the 30th. Now, usually they combine and they overlap, but this year is a unique year. God's divine calendar. I believe the next 30 plus days are going to be very supernatural days. Do you have your Bible, your notebooks, your journals? Let's go back and look at John chapter 12. I want you to take time and read the entire chapter. 
But for time's sake, we're going to read verse 12 through 16. It says, The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast, remember they're there for a divine appointment. That's what feast is. It's a moed. They heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And they took these palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna! And they started waving this palm trees. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and he sat upon it. As it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified. In other words, after everything had taken place and he ascended to heaven, he was glorified. Did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now, if you continue to read, you'll get an understanding of everything that's going to happen on this Palm Sunday. But I want you to go with me to Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. It says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. This is going to happen. I want you to get your hope all all. Uh, secured and, and your trust and your belief and your faith to understand you're a part of that great multitude. If you're saved, watch. No man can number them. All, of all nations, all kindreds and people and tongues, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Get a few, future picture of yourself. You're at the throne of God. You're clothed in this white robe. Remember, you have on the garments of salvation and the robes of righteousness, and you have a palm in your hand. And they cried with a loud voice saying, Hosanna, our salvation, or complete deliverance to our God, which sits upon the throne unto the Lamb. Now let's go back because when you start saying Hosanna, and we'll get there by the end, it literally means save now. So when they're crying, it means that there is a day, hear me, that you're going to stand before the Lord and have complete deliverance. There'll be no more generational curses. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more hurt or wounding or offense or heartache or death or discouragement or depression. God wipes all those things away. And there is a day that you have complete deliverance. That's so good. Hold on to that word. You see, from the very beginning, God always had a plan for you. He always had a plan for man. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 declares that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. Everything that God does is according to design. He's not haphazard. He doesn't make mistakes. He's not sitting there up on the throne saying, oh my goodness, uh, Paul is in trouble. Here, come together quick, heaven, a committee of heaven. Let's, let, let's, oh no, I can't believe she went through that. No, he knows everything before it happens and he already has an answer. What do you mean? Moses took nine months to complete the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 19, verse one, Numbers chapter 19. The Holy Spirit took nine months to form the body of Jesus the true tabernacle in the womb of Mary, Luke chapter one. You see, God always has an exact strategic design. He has a purpose and a plan. It's all the working out of his eternal purpose, which he purposed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, Ephesians chapter three, verse 11. And ultimately that is, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine and 10, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. Now this is vitally important because if you think that God's mad at you or God doesn't love you or God hates you or God's after you, God is not after you. He did not appoint you or me or any of mankind to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says he died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, whether we are living here in the earth or we're dead, we may live together with him. Do you understand that? Wrath in the Greek means punishment. You have to get this. God did not appoint to punish you. He's not mad at you. He came to give you an abundant life according to John 10, 10. And that word abundant means one that is superior in quality 
and quantity. I want to pray over you right now because every demonic spirit that is attacking your mind, your body, your spirit, your family, your finances, everything that you feel like, why isn't my life working? Let it be overturned right now. Let your mind be changed that God has a life for you. And I want you to, I want you to grab this. I want you to hold this by faith and receive it. God has a life that is superior in quality and in quantity. Don't live anything less than what God has for you. You see, he came to reconcile you to himself because God cannot, God cannot be one with sin. And when Adam sinned, all of mankind was born into that sin. So it's the original sin. We all have the propensity to sin and all of us are guilty because the first man messed up. But God wasn't going to leave us that way to reconcile us to Jesus Christ according to 2 Corinthians 5.18. What that means is God wants to restore what got all messed up in your life. And you go, well, I really didn't do anything. I just was born and look how, but see, we are born into this sin. We're born into all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now let's, let's understand what sin is. It means to miss the mark. Man missed the mark. But God didn't say, I'm going to leave you over here and not get you on the desk. The desk is the safe place. The desk is the provision place. The desk is the God place. And many people are over here and it's just like falling and all this destruction and generational curses and people dying premature and you know, sickness and disease and death and demonic activity. That happens all outside the desk. And God says, if you want to get on the desk, Jesus is reaching out his hand. You've got to hold it because he's going to bring you here. There's only one way to get on the desk. There's only one way to be saved. And that is through Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse nine and 10 says that if any man confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in his heart that he's the son of God, they'll be saved. Now this word saved is so big because we just, we've made it so religious, but saved means to be delivered, to be rescued, to be made whole. And that's what Palm Sunday is all about save now. You see, when God came to reconcile us, to reconcile means to bring together again those who are alienated, to reunite those who are at variance, to restore to amity and concord by removing that which hinders agreement and fellowship. What's all that mean? It means that we lost our relationship with God. See, Adam and Eve talked with God. They walked with God in the garden. And then the snake comes in in Genesis chapter three. And when Adam fell, all who were born after his likeness also fell. When Adam died, we all died. According to 1 Corinthians 15, 22, and Adam all die. You may be saying, Pastor Paul, I've never heard this. This is the basis of the gospel. Everything in this word, every promise, God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You've heard that. You'll be the head and not the tail. You've heard that. You're blessed coming in, blessed going out. You've heard that. You've heard so many promises, but all this is on one basis, the basis of Jesus Christ and the price he paid to reconcile you with God, to bring you back in agreement with God. So it says this, and Adam all die. However, it goes on to say, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. I might have been born into spiritual death, but the moment that I recognize, understand, and receive Jesus Christ, I made spiritually alive. That's why you can't convince people of salvation. The Bible says no man can be saved but by the Holy Spirit. You can speak the word. You can pray over people that the ground is received, but it is a moment that is released to them that they either reject it or they receive it. So those redeemed by Christ are not only recovered from the fall, but they're brought back to life in Christ. And this is so important because that's what enables you to reign in life. So before you're down here and you're really just a puppet to the enemy. Now, when you're with Christ, you live in a high place. Now, either you understand that or you don't. And because of ignorance, people perish. And ignorant doesn't mean you're stupid. Ignorant means that I don't have knowledge of something. But when you have knowledge, then you recognize, okay, I have dominion and I reign. Now start living like it, start acting like it. What do you mean? Well, let's keep going with this. God's the greatest architect of the universe. And he drew up the plans before creature ever was brought into existence. 
and everything concerning Christ and His church, which is you, was firmly settled, nothing could ever alter it, nothing could ever change it, nothing could ever interrupt it, because it was all settled before, before the foundation the Lamb of God was slain. So all that concerns the well-being of His people was done according to God's covenant enactment. Hebrews 10, 14 tells us in referencing to Jesus, by one offering, and this means a final, by finality, by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Woo! What that means is this. He has perfected. The, the Greek means this. Only once was this sacrifice, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, to be offered, never to be repeated. It was a perfect sacrifice that would completely perfect all who put their faith in it. So when Jesus said, it is finished, in effect, what he was saying, it is perfect. It is completely complete and it is perfectly perfect. Nothing can be taken from it and nothing can be added to it. Psalm 111 verse five states, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. Before any human being ever set foot on the planet, a covenant was cut that we had nothing to do with it. We simply reap the benefits if we choose to. We simply walk in the blessing. And through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb and the work of the cross, a divine exchange takes place that unlocks all the blessings, all the treasures of God's provision. And the work of the cross is not only what it can do for us, but even more importantly, what it can do in us. And here it is when he said it is finished. The greatest truth is that a whosoever will, me, a girl who is trailer trash, a girl whose daddy committed suicide and was sexually and physically abused, you, with your story, was given access to an almighty, holy, wonderful, perfect God through Jesus Christ. Revelation 22, 17. Now that's profound. On the cross, our old man was put to death that the new man might come to life. And in Matthew 3.10, the verse that really introduces the gospel, John the Baptist, the forerunner sent before Jesus says this, even now the ax is laid to the root of, of the trees. You see, why is he saying that? Because all of us have a root problem. Isaiah 53.6, we all are like sheep have gone astray. Not some of us, every one of us went our own way. And we've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity, the generational sin of us all. That's mind boggling because our root problem is every one of us is a rebel against God. There's a rebel that resides in every one of us. And God's remedy for the rebel is he does not send us to Sunday school. He doesn't send us to church. He doesn't teach us the golden rule or make us memorize scripture. What does God do to the rebel? He executes him. Execution is God's solution. But the message of mercy is that execution took place on Jesus on the cross. This just blows my mind because he says, you're the rebel, Paula, but I'm going to lay the iniquity on Jesus. So he took the sin, and all the evil consequences of that sin from me, my mother, my father, my grandmother, my grandfather, my great grandmother, great father, from my children, my future children, on and on and on, all the line, all that sin. And he said, Paula, I'm not going to execute you. You should have to pay the price, but I'm going to take that iniquity. And iniquity is generational sin. There's sin trespasses and iniquity. Iniquity is the deepest level of sin that is so repetitive and built almost into the spiritual DNA of a person. Daddy was an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic. Pappy, grandpappy was an alcoholic. You don't have to be that way because the iniquity was laid on Jesus and God who cannot be one with sin allowed his own son to be crucified so that he could be reconciled to us. What kind of God is that that loves you so much? This is Palm Sunday. That loves you so much that he's going to crucify his own son to be one with you. Romans 6, 6 and 7 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. 
That means you're not, you're not bound by sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Wow, that's some heavy stuff. Now, Paul is speaking out of your past sins, but he's dealing with the rebel inside you now. And because of the death of Jesus on the cross, he says, your old man, Paula, has been crucified with him. And that's some good news because that means I can now live with Christ. Romans 6, 8 goes on to say this. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it states, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. It means I can't change anything about my past, but I can change everything about my future. Somebody might say, oh, Paula did this, Paula did that, Paula did this. Probably true, might be true, but guess what? It's my past. And forgetting those things that are behind me, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So here's the important, that although this amazing covenant was established from the beginning, it culminates in this climatic moment, in the last few days, which we're here to celebrate, which we're here to honor. Now remember, they've come out to issue an encounter with God in time and in place. They start, they start waving these palm branches. That's vitally important because a person of what we call prophetic purpose means that your prophecy doesn't just mean to foretell. It means to tell forth. You're moving things. You're shifting things. They knew something was happening because these were based on the prophecies of those in the Old Testament. So now they understand because it says they had understanding. So this isn't just haphazard. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 9 and 15 and 16 says, the multitudes went before and that followed crying saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were very sore displeased. Look at this, that's what religion does. And they said unto him, here's what they say. And Jesus said to them, yeah. Have you ever read that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise? That's important because it's a perfected praise that brought forth the purpose and the will of God. The Bible declares in Psalm 34, one through three, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see, Hosanna, which means save now. Hosanna, which means complete deliverance, deliver now, came by them praising. All they had ever done is say hallelujah. Hallelujah is a universal praise. The word Hosanna had never ever been used. So when they begin to praise God with a prophetic praise, they begin to produce different results in the earth. Why? Because your praise, now get it in here, because when you start praising and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, your praise starts to produce. To produce means to bring forth, to exhibit, to make something, to bring it into existence, to give birth or to give rise. We're commanded in Psalm 150 verse six, let everything that had breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. You see, when we begin to praise God, we begin to move things in the realm of the spirit. I want you right now to put a Hosanna on. I want you right now to begin to declare Hosanna over your family, Hosanna over your finances, Hosanna over your body, Hosanna over everything in your life, your purpose. Remember, Hosanna is a prophetic praise. Hosanna means save now. I pray thee now, save. I pray be open now to defend or to rescue. It is a praise of deliverance. Hallelujah is a praise for what he has done. But Hosanna is a praise for what he is about to do. I dare you right now, put on a prophetic praise. Come on, honor God, knowing that this is his holy week, knowing that he completed the plan. And on Good Friday, by the time you get to Great Friday and Resurrection Sunday, you're gonna have testimony after testimony because Hosanna is a prophetic praise that brings your future into alignment with the revelation of God. Here you go. I'm gonna leave you in conclusion. Psalm 118, verse 25 and 26, save now. I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. 
Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. It's not just save now, but send prosperity. Prosperity means to push forward, to make profitable, to break out, to cause, to be effective, to produce the intended results. Here you go. Say it with me. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. I just pray, God, that every person listening will see a breakthrough. They will see intended, effective results. They will produce the results that are part of your plan and part of your purpose. Hosanna. We worship our way through it. We pray praise our way into the prophetic promises. And we thank you for the victory that you've given us through Christ Jesus. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hebrews 13.8. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. Luke 6.38. If God is speaking to you to be a blessing and sow a generous ministry gift into the fertile soil of Paula White Ministries, call the toll-free number, go to the website, write the P.O. Box, or simply text PWM to the number 45777 right now from your smartphone. Your generous support will help millions of people through this ministry, including reaching the world with the priceless gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ, transforming lives, healing hearts, and winning souls every day through this television program and the live preaching ministry of Paula White Kane and Jonathan Kane. Our feeding outreaches, providing food, clothing, household furniture, and goods to those in need in the local community and around the nation. Our emergency relief efforts, providing quick response assistance with food and relief supplies to victims of natural disasters like Puerto Rico and war-torn areas like Ukraine with other ministries around the nation and the world, going into prisons, ministering in the streets, and making a difference in communities. Thank you, and God bless you. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Him. Maybe you've been trying to do life on your own. Stop doing that. You're not created to to carry it on your own. Let's pray. Let's ask God to just bring you to Jesus Christ right now. Pray this prayer. Say, Father God, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I need you. I want you. I receive you. If you prayed that prayer, just that simple heartfelt prayer, then you're saved. You go, don't I need to do like three this and ten? No, no, no. Look, that's not the end of all things. That's the beginning of all things. Where do I start, Paula? Go to paulawhite.org. Go to the website. I want you to hear your prayer requests and your praise reports, but there's a free digital download on what is salvation. What does it mean to be saved? I want you right now to go there to get that and start walking with God. I'd love to be your pastor. God bless you. The preceding program has been made possible through the faithful prayers and generous support of our partners and friends in this viewing area.